Zoe, I get to cook you a steak once again. Whoa. I've done it a couple of times, yeah. but this is... A a, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. thank you. I've, uh, this is a special one to me. This is flank. Normally okay. we'd have fillet or we'd have rump or, or porterhouse steak, but this is what we would consider a secondary cut. Yeah. And it comes from the flank, which is around the belly here. And if you look at it, my flank would be a lot more delicious than yours because it's a bit more meat and, and fat on it. <laughs> but um, it's a beautiful cut um, and I think it's a, it's a cheaper cut, but I think it's delicious and I'm going to show you how to cook it and I'm going to show you how to do a little sauce with it. You. You, there we go, you can have a look at that. There we go. Oh, <laughs> nice bit of flank there, isn't it, love? All right, I'll pop that behind us here. You can see what I've done is cut it in half and I've made sure that it's, you know, just removed a little bit of the yep. sinew that's okay. on the outside. Now what I'm going to do is put a little uh, little dollop of olive oil on that side and a little on that side. And I'll get you to rub that in Zoe, just with your fingers there. Massage the oil Massage into it. Massage the meat. One, one of the things, you know, the one of the things most important, grass-fed meat, Australian grass-fed beef is always going to be better. Look at that. Isn't awesome. it great? You're like a hand model, isn't it? Or a meat model. There we go. Now pop that down. You're getting excited now, Zoe. You need to take it easy. Now what I'll do is I'll put some salt on there. Salt loves meat. Meat loves salt. Very important that you season the meat and bring it up to room temperature. Flip it over for me. I'm really enjoying having you here, Zoe, because you're doing all the work for me and I get to do my favourite bit, making sure there's plenty of salt in there. I'm just taking a deep breath. I'm like... <gasps> it is. It's, I mean, if you're going to have a steak, you might as well cook it properly. This I mean, true. they this say that, true. you know, we should eat less meat, but we should eat better quality meat. Um, and we should cook it properly, yeah, you know? Absolutely. And, and we should say, just I'll say it really quietly, we should have maybe one or two meat free days a week. <laughs> there we go. I agree but, with that. You know, maybe one Lots of those weeks of a year. Plant based diets with a little bit of red meat is, I think, the perfect balance. I agree with you. Now, flip that over there. Now, a bit of you pepper agree on with it. Me? Oh, I do agree with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm an advocate for good quality meat oh, and less yeah. of it and pay a little bit more. The farmers yeah. get, you know, more money for, yeah. for looking after and doing the right things. So, there we go. So, that's. Nicely seasoned. We can just move the meat around there, pick up all that salt and pepper there. And I've got my griddle pan here. You can see there's no oil on it at all. I've got up to a ni nice hot temperature. I can feel the heat coming from mm -hmm. it. So medium, medium to high heat, possibly high heat if it's not a lot of juice in it. And then what I do is I pop it on here and you'll hear that lovely sound. And every uh, minute or so, I'm just going to keep turning it okay. over okay. because the juices that want to escape through the top of it. I'm going to confuse those juices by uh, turning <laughs> it over. We seal it off, we brown it off to lock in the flavour. These are always the great tips people want to know about how to cook that perfect steak, particularly with like a cut my flank. What do you do? Do you turn it once, twice? So it's great for everybody to learn a little bit more about that. This one will probably turn. It will turn four or five times. Yep. Now, if you grab that uh, that bowl down the end there, I'm going to get you to grab some herbs. Yeah. Um, some herbs. There's some tarragon right. and nice. some thyme. If you can grab some of that. Sure. We're going to pop it all in the bowl here to get it about all ready. About a tablespoon of each? About a tablespoon of each. I've got some red onion there, about a quarter of a red onion. I've got some uh, cornichons there. I've got some uh, some baby capers. Sorry, excuse me. Now, sometimes with the capers, if they have them in salt, yeah. you've got to really wash them yes. off and, and rinse that salt off them. But these have been kept in brine, so a little bit of vinegar and salt in there, so they'll be delicious. Okay. And I've also got some garlic. I'm just going to uh, microplane that garlic there, just a, a little bit of that. About about a quarter of a garlic clove, so you don't want it too strong. Can I strong. put some of this micro chervil in I there would love well? some of the chervil in yeah, there. Love and it. some of the garlic chive, which is, which is nice Beautiful. and delicious. Now, over here, I'm just going to pop this over like that, and you can see it's got a nice little tinge on the outside where it's actually mm -hmm. caramelised beautifully. Look at oh, that. These it's... herbs are gorgeous. I mean, such flavour, really, really beautiful taste and fresh. Exactly. And we want something that's really going to give that steak a lot of zing. Yeah. Now, I've got the bar mix bowl there. If you can bring that over there, that's, that's it, the little tube or bowl or whatever you want to call it. What I'm going to do is pop this straight into here. I probably should have put it in here straight away, but I'm thinking that bowl was there and we should use it. So I'll just pop that in there like that. And what I'm going to do is add some red wine yeah. vinegar to that. There we go, about a quarter of a cup of red wine vinegar. Give it nice. some sharpness, Zoe. And also a little bit of sharpness as well is some, uh, some Dijon mustard. And I'm going to grab some extra virgin olive oil and put a nice big splush. And please don't add any more salt because you've got a lot of salt in there. <laughs> there is a bit of salt in there. So what I'll do is add a nice big splush of this. Gorgeous. It's important if you're going to use olive oil, you use a good olive oil. This is an all-rounder which yep. has got a great flavour. It's perfect for cooking or making green salsas like this. It's a perfect thing. Now Lovely. I'm going to turn this a couple of times. You're going to whiz that around, just a little splush of that in there. Whiz that around till it's a nice sort of chunky puree. Yep. Um, and by that time we would have rested this steak and we'll be ready to carve it and put the two together.
Zoe, I've let my uh, little flank there rest for about five minutes. I normally rest my meat for about half the cooking time yeah. or a little bit longer. Helps to relax all those juices so they stay in the meat. Nice. So when you carve it, which is, which is what I'm about to do, all the juices stay in there. Fabulous. Now have a look at this. I've got a nice big sharp knife and what I'll do is I'll just carve all the way down there like that and I'll cut it into nice thin strips. Nice. You can see there is a bit of juice in there, which is what you want. It's just, you know, it's looking good. Nice yeah, and flavoursome. Smells fantastic. Oh, look, what I'm going to do is leave that last little piece there, which we call the chef's piece, because <laughs> we leave that on the board and that's what we cut up and eat when you're, uh, when you're sitting in a restaurant. And then you can just sort of fan it out a little Beautiful. bit, pick it up with a knife and pop it onto the plate there like that. Lovely. Looks great, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. It does, isn't it? I'll just yeah. sprinkle a little bit more salt in there because salt loves meat, meat loves salt. They go together so well. And I'll just get some of the, the, uh, the salsa here. I'll mm. pop it there right through the middle, maybe just a little bit on the side there. Now, the salsa verde for me makes it, you take something that's, you know, indulgent, like a, a good piece of steak. There we go. And I'll just snip that you there as well. lighten that up with fresh herbs. Because we need to garnish it up and make it look nice and nice. pretty. Looks gorgeous like that. And of course, I'm not going to stop there, Zoe. I'm just getting all excited. <laughs> I'm going to drizzle a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on there. A good olive oil you can use to cook the steak and also to drizzle a little bit on top as well. Mm. Looks beautiful. It looks healthy, delicious, great source of protein. Look at that. A little bit of meat on there, a little bit of salsa. I'm just going to get... Normally it's ladies first, but when it comes to a steak, I'm sorry, it's every man for themselves. Mm. Oh. oh. It's delicious. I love that salsa verde. It is just beautiful. I love the sharpness of the vinegar. It is. It's, it makes Quite it really salt. Well. This yep. whole dish is just a tad too salty for me, but I know you love salt. Which means it's perfect for me. <laughs> That's how you yeah, know. Every person's going to love it. <laughs> but, you know, taking a cheap cut, uh, sealed it and cooked it, and we've created a beautiful dish. You might want to cook it a little bit more than this. We like it medium rare. Perfect. Another three, four minutes on the grill, a little bit of resting, and it'll cook it a little bit more, but I reckon that's great. You know what? Three sensational dishes. I know you're the meat man, but I've got to say, I think my stir fry sung out, but this for me, this is the winner.